Hello, happy Wednesday. There's always this weird transition where I get a spinning wheel, but I think I'm live. So I think I'm live. Hello, <laughs> now it says I'm live. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about common causes of low back pain. So if you have a low back issue, drop a, drop a raised hand or me in the comments. I know there's a few of you in here myself included. I have a history of disc tears, uh, sciatic pain, which I don't feel anymore. Occasionally, I'll feel the discs uh, when I don't follow my own program. The perfect storm of events usually has to happen. So we're going to go over some reasons why you might have low back pain and also um, how to stretch the hip flexors, the psoas, without irritating the problem, making it worse, or even causing a low back issue to begin with. You ready to get started? Okay, so if you have, if you stretch your hip flexors, comment below. If you stretch your psoas, comment below. Let me know. Um, no shame, no judgment. It's, it, you should want to stretch these areas because they can greatly help low back pain. So you see, I have the whiteboard behind me. You know I mean business when I bring out the whiteboard, right? Uh, let me show you the spine first of all. So the spine, right, here's our head from the side. We should have a gentle curve in the neck, a soft rounding of our low back, the mid back, the thoracic spine, gentle curve of the low back, right? And then in between, this is called our lordosis, we want it. Sometimes people overdo the core and they flatten out their back or you hear the tucking of the tail or when you're lying on the ground, flattening your low back to the ground can cause havoc in your disc. Before we get there, let's talk about um, the spine. So we have our vertebrae. And in between each of our vertebrae, we have our discs, those pancake-like structures. And then we also have our nerves, right? And then alongside of the spine, we have ligaments and fascia. So a whole bunch of structures in the spine. Ideally, we want space off the discs and the nerves so you don't feel any uh, symptoms of either disc irritation or nerve irritation. When there's a lack of space, it's also known as uh, degeneration. Uh, there can even be arthritis there. So common causes of low back pain. So let me just, and this is, it won't be the exhaustive list, but let me just give you some examples of what can go wrong in the back. Kind of tagging up off the, the Facebook Live we did last week of how one exercise won't cut it, right? And this is also why, right? So your muscles, the QL, quadratus lumborum, the paraspinals alongside the back, they can be gripping, causing soreness, right? Your disc can have a bulge. It can have a her herniation like me. You can have tears. You can have um, a des desiccated disc where it's flattened or is not flat and uh, fat and plump like a balloon. You can have nerve symptoms and pain. You can have SI joint dysfunction, which is sac sacroiliac, and that's down even lower, lower than the um, lumbar spine. But some people mistaken it as a low back issue because it's right there at the low back. It's just a separate joint. Um, and usually it's a one-sided thing. So there can be sacroiliac dysfunction. There can be fascia referrals. There can be um, uh, a facet issue, right? Maybe you have scoliosis. Maybe it's a combination of some of these, right? So there can be so many issues or reasons as to why you have low back pain. This is the what, right? And that's helpful to know, of course, but sometimes you might not really get um, a diagnosis until you get an MRI or go through all of all these Western medicines, hoops and hurdles. Sometimes you don't need a diagnosis. You can still heal, I can, um, without it. 
the more important thing is why this is occurring in the first place. And for each of us, let's take discs, because that's super common. Why my disc might be torn, you might have a very similar disc tear. It might be very, very different, right? Because of how we live our life, our lifestyle, the patterns, the habits, our thought processes what muscles we use or don't use, what muscles are tight, what muscles are strong, what muscles are overused, right? So for one issue, even though someone's imaging may look similar, one person to the next, there could be many different reasons as to why um, someone has the disc issue. And this is super important uncovering because then that will tell you the how how to heal it, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk a little bit today is the how, because for some people, you have tightness and it's compressing the spine. Remember that um, nice curve of the low back I showed, how that should be existing, our, our natural lordosis. Now, sometimes Someone has a tight psoas, which attaches on the front of the spine. So deep, 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 deep in there, attaches along the front of the spine, embeds itself into the discs, in front of the vertebrae, into the fascia there, and comes up all the way into the diaphragm, actually. Um, and if it's really tight, can clamp down on the diaphragm, because so it can constrict our breath, and it can pull the spine forward. So intuitively, some of you know, oh, okay, I'll stretch my hip flexors, right? I sit a lot, or maybe you run, or you're a cyclist, or whatever it may be, I'll stretch my psoas. Now, here is what I see go wrong. It's a very good how to hopefully solve a problem. I'm going to move this board now. So, again... Stretching the psoas, stretching our hip flexors, our quads, that can be a very good thing for us. But a lot of the times, what I see go wrong, making sure you can see my mat down here, is that someone comes on the mat to my class or just into my clinic and or I'm working with them online and I'll ask them to show me, how are you stretching your hip flexor? Right, so the hip flexor is a deep muscle in the front through the pelvic bowl, it wraps around, attaches on your thigh bone, starts up here, the vertebrae of the spine, and goes down. So if it's tight, what happens is it pulls the spine forward. So I'll have someone come in and they're like, I stretch my hip flexors like this, right? Or warrior one, this is another super common one. I stretch my hip flexors here. I know this shirt is loose, so I'll put my hand at my back. I stretch my hip flexors like this. And what is happening in both those incidences is the body is taking the path of least resistance. What does that mean? Well, it means that the psoas, the hip flexors are tight. They also might be weak because of that. It's a whole other story but the, they're tight, so they have resistance. The path of least resistance is to allow, when we're trying to stretch them, to spine to come forward even more. So if you've ever had like a low back crankiness or crunchiness or weirdness or pinching when doing any type of so as stretch, a lunge, warrior one, crescent pose, this is why. Because your psoas, because it attaches on the spine, is pulling the spine forward and then causing lack of space in the low back, right? So that is a sign to stop and back off. So what do you do instead? The best thing you can do is engage your core. And it's not a tucking the tail, flattening the spine, engaging of the core, which I showed in uh, on the whiteboard before, because you want to maintain that natural curve of the low back. It's a drawing of the, the belly button to the spine to engage the transverse abs, maybe even 
a subtle lift up through the pelvic floor. And you can see the difference here, right? I'll show you with my hands um, holding my shirt so you can see. In this position, I am not engaging the core. See how my spine is going forward, right? Now I'm gonna engage the core, belly button to the spine. So I'm not also not tucking the tail. See the difference here? It's the middle ground, core is strong, and then I'm coming forward. See, I don't go as far. So a lot of the times our ego gets in the way and we like have to feel like we need to go further, deeper, push more. That's when we are sabotaging ourselves. So here with my core strong, I'm getting a super nice stretch right here. So let me just do my other side to balance myself out. I'll show you on this way. So again, core strong, coming forward. Not if I let go of my core, I collapse. And this is huge because I get a lot of people, same thing here in, in Warrior One. They come to me and they say in Warrior One or the Crescent Lunges or uh, the lunge poses that they can't get a good stretch in the front of their hip. Um, they said they, a lot of people either tell me they don't feel anything or they feel it in their low back. And I, I'll test their hip flexors. So there's certain tests we do in the physical therapy world that can measure the length of the psoas. So I'll test their, their psoas length and it'll be shortened, it'll be tight. So it tells me that something's going wrong with how they stretch. And a lot of the times it's not, they're not engaging their core. So then the, the spine is being pulled forward by the psoas. So the psoas length essentially doesn't change. Everything's just shifted forward and that's why they feel it in the back and nothing in the front of the hip. So that's your homework this week. Now, you may or may not need a psoas stretch. That we didn't go over. It really is dependent upon, again, going on with what's going on in your body. But a good portion of Americans anyways, could benefit from some hip flexor strengthening, especially if you sit a lot, drive a lot, you run, you walk, if you're a cyclist or you have the Peloton. Um, it's, a, it's a very good thing to do to reverse any of these activities or non-activities if you're a couch asana or you know, couch surfing. <laughs> um, to reverse this tightening motion, position of, of the psoas. Um, if you need to strengthen that the psoas as well, or <clears throat> learn how to correctly activate your core as well, that might be a whole other issue. So remember, when you're healing or when you're working when you're with your body or when you're creating that program of healing, it's really working through all the different layers of what needs to be included for you, what actually, what structures are being irritated why they're getting irritated in the first place, and then um, unraveling the how. And that's what I help a ton with. So if you're interested, um, I have some free uh, wellness assessments or consults available for this week. I think this week I only have one spot left. Uh, next week I might have a few more. So um, go grab your spot. I'll drop the link in the comments. And that's exactly what I go over. We just talk. There's no obligation to do anything. It's totally worth your, what you're going to give up when you sign up for this is your time. And how I make sure that your time's worth it is because we go over, okay, what's going on? I listen. Um, I can usually pinpoint what structure is being irritated. I can usually tell you why. And so then we'll start to talk about the holistic program of all that you might need um, to get the complete and lasting healing. So let me drop that link in the show notes. In the meantime, if you, in the show notes, you guys can tell I have a podcast, right? <laughs> You're, thank you. I'm so glad you showed up. Um, if you have any questions, I would love to hear it. If uh, you have a topic that you would love to hear for next week, uh, let me know. Also, speaking of the podcast, this week I'm super excited to bring on is uh, Donna, who's an entrepreneur. So if you're an entrepreneur or um, work for a company or a person that needs a website, Donna does an amazing job. So she creates websites. Uh, <clears throat> she also has some do-it-yourself uh, programs um, for entrepreneurs to create their own website. But on the podcast this week, uh, we go over, she has a history of disc issue, 
sciatic pain. She was stuck on the couch. So you'll hear her story about how she overcame this um, and she's doing great now. So if you want some inspiration or some motivation, um, go listen to her story. She's a wonderful individual. And then her information is in the show notes and I'll um, include that link as well. And then um, I hope you have a, you guys have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.